enter in this area is just looking amazing. I am so happy with it. We have gotten this adorable little fountain. Look at all these lush flowers. Oh, this is great. And people seem to love our meerkats. I love our meerkats. Now that they're not trying to escape again, they're just the cutest things in the world. <gasps> oh, 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 are you going in your little burrow? Are you going in your little burrow? Nah, they're running around. Oh, what's the, what's the matter with our lemur? Our lemurs have been so chaotic lately. They are just amazing. Look, Silver is already a grandmother. And thank you so much for the list of names in turn. I needed them because we have so many lemur babies. So this is going to be Elliot. He is Silver's mate. He is also mated with lemur number six, who is going to be named Pandora, because it's such a beautiful name. And then her mother is Aurora. I'm surprised that she hasn't had uh, more children yet, but I would bet that she's going to get pregnant any day now, because that seems to happen awful quickly. And then finally we have Scooter. There we go. So now we finally have some names for our troublesome lemurs and we're keeping a good eye on them. There's more ice blocks. We have to get rid of those ice blocks. They cause so many problems. Our lemurs don't like them. They just get into trouble. And also in turn, speaking of things that get into trouble, I think our warthogs are killing our bee eaters. I really do. I think what we might do is actually take our warthogs and yep, look at that. Another carcass. I think it's time in turn. It is time to take our warthogs and scooch them out of that exhibit and we're going to move them into a new exhibit and I think we're actually going to take out this whole line on the safari jeep tour because it'll give the animals more space to free roam and we will have people move so that they can come down in here to a secondary exhibit where we will keep our rhinoceroses and our warthogs. Oh look at that Pandora is giving birth already! But we're going to pull this down so we can have our rhinoceroses and our warthogs and maybe even a stray ostrich or two. I'm not sure. We'll see about that in here. And that'll just give everyone a little bit more room. In fact, we might just extend this whole giant thing, except that would, that would defeat the purpose of separating our warthogs. So let's see what the rhinoceros options are and who we would potentially want to add in here. So let us start with the tropical savannah. And do we have any rhinos? We do indeed have rhinos. There's the black rhinoceros and there's also the white rhinoceros. And you know, maybe we'll add both species and our warthogs into this like rhinoceros tough guy. Tough, tough mood. Oh, and Chira just died of old age. Aww. Aurora is now pregnant. We'll let our new adult, adult cheetahs roam around. We might put Spot in with his father because we don't want him mating with his sister. And we might get Lily a new mate, so we'll have to, we'll see what happens. We'll open this up for now and see what happens. All right. And Carl Sifaka, number five, is always having so many problems. Going to climb the tree fern. Hmm. Let's take out a couple tree ferns. Maybe that's how they're getting out, is they're climbing the tree ferns and jumping over the edge. Because I've had to keep an eye on the lemurs. They have just been going nuts and getting out quite easily. Also, let's remove this so that it's more area for the kids to walk into the playground. And then let's go ahead and get to work building our newest exhibit. I'm so excited. All right, so let's bring this over here. A couple, couple finch posts. Let's see, and one, two, three. We want to leave a nice little gap. Come over here. This is going to be where we keep our rhinoceri. Let's see. I think actually we'll put a restaurant on this side over here. So whoop, there we go. So yeah, we'll put a restaurant over here for our guest to enjoy right there. And then we're going to tuck this all the way back here. Or let's just tuck it all the way up against the wall. There we go. Hopefully they won't bash through and bother our cheetah, but I don't think they will. Good, good. Oops, aw oh, man. See intern, this is why you have to watch your steps. One misstep with our fencing and we have to take out a whole line of fencing and come in and put it down. It's a good thing we don't have to worry too badly about wasting money because I worked very hard breeding up several new types of dinosaur and I managed to have some pretty big sales. One, two, three. Good, good, good. Managed to have some pretty astounding cells. So, we have plenty of money. Plenty of money right now. 
it's always so nice when we don't have to worry about money because it lets us focus a little bit more on our wonderful animals. A little more exclusively. Yeah, okay, come here. Come here. Just want to bring you in a little bit. There we go. A little decorative touch that way. All right, so the rhinoceri. Let's find out what they're going to need for their exhibit. First things first, they are tropical savanna critters. Large tropical savanna critters. Bring Telemer 5 is hungry. Uh-oh. Where are you? Okay, that's it. Every single tree fern, every single one of the tree ferns is coming out of there. No more of this nonsense. I think they're escaping by climbing the tree ferns. So every single freaking tree fern that I can that I can see that's anywhere close. Anywhere close. Let's see. Is that a tree fern? That, that, that's a fence. You can stay fence. But if there is a tree fern near our exhibit edge, it's going. Because I think that's how the lemurs keep escaping. They just keep sneaking right out. I just can't believe it. Also, the healer monster, why are you thirsty? What's the matter, little one? Get some water. We're going to sprinkle little water things around. There we go. It might just be too small to be able to reach all the, the spots on its own. But there, that should hopefully take good care of our lemur escape issues that we've been having. Because goodness, can't turn our backs on them for two seconds and they're getting out in turn. Alright, now let's go ahead. Oh, and Justice is giving birth. All the more reason we need to get the warthogs separate into their own enclosure. There we go. Nice, beautiful exhibit this way. Let us see what our Ranasari are going to want. They just want to rest under some nice shade structures. As far as decorative items go, they're pretty, pretty simple. Let's get them a car tire researched in a plastic barrel. I think they'd enjoy that. Yeah, they really don't need much. They're pretty content with just the basics in life. And we'll get some a nice hay rack in here for them. But yeah, so next up... Yeah, I think it's going to make everyone happier with the Jeep Tour if we extend it into here too. So next up, let us get some big rocks in there. Just a couple big rocks as decorative pieces. There's that. There's this. What? Meerkat 1 escaped again. How did you pull that off, eh? Maybe we need different fencing for them. We'll consider different fencing for the meerkats if they're going to continue their escapades that way. We can't have escaping meerkats. That's not the way we work around here. Alright, let's sprinkle in a little bit of dirt. Heal Monster 7. I put in some water. I hope you can get there. Sometimes it just takes them a while to get there in turn. What was that? What are you doing? All right, we have escaping animals left and right in turn. So you know what we're going to do? We're going to replace the safari fence, all right? We're going to put in a fencing that the meerkats hopefully can't wiggle their way through. I suppose it's because they're so small. They're just able to wiggle right out. And we're not having any of that nonsense. No siree. So let's find a nice fence. Now, I know you may think it's a little bit silly in turn, but it's actually very important to think about aesthetics because things that you can make pretty, people tend to enjoy. And we need them to enjoy our zoo so that they want to remember that seeing the animals was a special experience and they want to take care of those animals in the real world. So it's very important that we make our zoo look nice. It's not just, it's not just being silly, trust me. All right, you know what? We're just gonna go ahead and use my favorite fence. No, we aren't, because it doesn't match. Ah, see, I just gave you a lecture on aesthetics, and then I try to break my own rules. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to use... What fencing? What fencing? I know, it seems like, seems like this should be an easy choice, but sometimes it's just so challenging. So challenging, especially challenging... Uh, I really like that one actually. Let's just go ahead and we're going to use this windowed fence that I don't think our meerkats can can manage to wiggle out of and we'll see if this is how our meerkats have been escaping because we have had far too many escaping animals lately in turn and that is not a good thing. There we go. I mean that could that could like put our animals at risk it could cause us to lose stars. It could cause a whole host of problems. All right, just one little fence left. Good job, intern. Thank you so much for helping me swap that out. All right, then we're going to come in here, put a new gate in. There. Hopefully that will prevent more animals from escaping 
And we can focus again on getting our rhino area tidied up and prepared. So let's see. A couple of those. A couple of these. Zebra Doiker is doing well. More babies being born. Let's see. Ooh, new acacia trees. I don't mind if I do. The umbrella acacia trees. Now what we probably need to do before we, we keep moving is actually get the Jeep Tour laid down. So let's see where that is. Jeep Tour Road. We're going to bring the road over from here. Yeah, we'll have to be careful. There we go. Yeah, we're going to bring the road over from here. And we'll let it kind of roam around a little bit to see, see the rhinoceri. We want to give it a good long area. There we go. And then we'll have it come back up and it'll connect right here. And so then we'll cut out all the rest of this, this tour, which seems to be where the traffic jams really start too. So hopefully that'll help everybody by making it easier for the animals to enjoy their exhibit and the people to enjoy the animals within them. All right, we're gonna put down a few more trees, a few trees here and there. And we're gonna put down like the car tires and the plastic barrels. This will be like the, the rhinoceri but headbutting area. Then we're gonna come over here with our shade structures and make a nice quiet little shaded area where they can they can relax, unwind, not have to worry about the prying human eyes. There. And we'll put some more trees out. Nice little tree area. There we go. Oh, that looks so peaceful. I'd want to curl up under the shade over there and relax. So hopefully that means they'll enjoy it. There, that should be good. Get some decorative termite mounds sprinkled around because they're so cool. And then let's see what kind of tour objects we can add in because the tour objects are rather amazing. I will admit it in turn. Ever since I found that amazing mineral formation that we used in our, our island zone tour. In fact, where is it? Oh, look at it. Look at that beautiful mineral deposit. Isn't it just amazing? I love it. So let's see, what could we add over here? We could add a geyser, that would be pretty cool. We could add a bat cave, a rock pool, desert oasis, another volcano. Fog wouldn't exactly be appropriate for this area. I think a geyser would be fun though. Let's put a geyser like right there and move the trees. There we go, just a random geyser, cause why not? Cause why not in turn? All right, now we can add in our awesome plants, our amazing African daisies, which really look so good, especially mixed with the elephant grass. So let's go ahead, cover the area nice and thick in some plants, leave it a little bit open here and there so that our rhinoceros will be able to see what they're doing with their toys, their enrichment objects in turn. Oh, and Gila Monster 8 just hatched. Our animals seem pretty content for now, so I think removing those trees actually may have really helped our lemurs realize there's more to life than climbing in the trees, except for lemur 5, who has to prove me wrong just then. So sorry, lemur 5. We'll help you out in just a minute. Alright, African daisies everywhere. A few over here. A few over there. A few along there. Then the red oats just kind of sprinkled in. Give it a little more, a little more lush depth because it can get so amazingly beautiful and plant covered when the rains come through Africa. The savanna can just transform into this lush, gorgeous world. And all of that disappears mostly because of the herds, the gigantic, fantastic herds of animals that come through. It's just stunning to see millions and millions of different, different hoofed animals on their march so that they can eat, eat plenty and plenty, let's see, let's sprinkle this in here, of the savanna grass that grows during the rainy season. All right, let's move this over here. Good, and it really is quite beautiful. It's one of the largest migrations in the world in turn. And it's getting a little smaller every year, as are most things, but I think that should do that, good. All right, so let's make sure we have food available for our rhinoceri, because they are going to need to eat. And we're going to tuck the food, actually, even though it removes the plants that we just put down. 
we're gonna tuck the food kind of out of the way away from where uh, the tracks are in the hope that that'll make it easier for the animals to be able to eat and drink in peace we'll put some nice little like fruit in piles over here and we're also going to put down some water troughs right over here yeah we'll put one right there Let's put another one over here, and we're actually going to move the toy. Oh, and Aurora is giving birth. Oh my goodness. They just don't wait in turn. And let's add another water trow. Trow. All right, let's see. Actually, let's add a little, little corner with some water. And that'll be so our warthogs have somewhere where they can, they can wallow. There we go. This should be a good spot for wallowing. And hopefully for drinking in case anyone wants to come over here. All right, so there's those guys. Let's go ahead and grab all of our warthogs and move them in first. See how they're doing? Hmm, it stopped out that bee eater. It's not a happy bee eater. I really think having less trails. The Sandy Cat 10 is very unhappy. What happened, my friend? Why are you stuck? Ugh, I swear this heat rock is like not worth the trouble it gives our cats. We're gonna just get rid of it. And then let's see, Zebra Doikers, Finnick Fox. Why is the Finnick Fox so hungry? They have tons of food. Hmm. Hmm, it's fighting with others, that's why. Yeah, we have to go through and like adopt out the Finnick Foxes in bundles sometimes because there's just so many of them. Just so many of them in turn. There we go. All right, Ringtail Lemurs are doing okay, except Ringtail Lemur 6 is really thirsty because you're out of your exhibit again. How did you do that? If I can figure out how those guys are sneaking out, I swear. Gila monster number seven, we're gonna adopt you out actually. And then Pandora, how are you doing? What's up? She's waiting for her baby so she can nurse her baby. What's the baby doing? Stop playing in the killie tree and go to your mother. Those naughty babies. And meanwhile, our African spurred tortoises have laid their eggs. So let's work on getting our warthogs into their new exhibit. Because I don't want them messing with any more of our poor little bee eaters. There you go, Joan. Here you go, little baby warthog. Justice, come here. Gonna bring Justice over here. Warthog number six, come here, little one. You need to be with your mom. Justin, I saw you try to escape. Come on in. Warthog number five. There's so many warthogs in turn. They just had so many babies, oh my goodness. All right, so that should really help. How are our zebras doing? We seem to be going down on zebra numbers, so I'm gonna add in a couple more females and hopefully that'll help things. But first things first, let's go ahead and we are going to change up the trail. That'll be the first thing we do. And then we'll add in our rhinoceri. All right, okay. Yep, this is, this is happening. Ugh, okay. First we're gonna have to close the jeep tours so that people will get out and then we'll we'll set it all up so that we don't want to eject people into the middle of our exhibit and turn. That just wouldn't end well. All right, so here we go. Now we're gonna be adding in the black rhinoceri. Oh, and then everyone's really happy in here, so they seem to be doing okay. Because the black rhinoceros is actually considered extinct in the wild by some groups because of how few there are left. So it'll be my great pleasure to be able to add a few of them into our exhibit. So we're gonna add in one male. And we'll add in two females. And then we'll add in one male and one female of the white rhinoceros. And we'll hopefully, well hopefully everyone will get along okay. And everyone won't fight. And that geyser is so cool, that's awesome. I think people are gonna love that on their tour. And let's check in here. Critically endangered. Rhinoceros is the common name for five species of enormous mammals with two, one or two horns protruding from their snouts. Rhinoceros are among the busy, biggest and heaviest land animals alive today, exceeded in size only by the elephant and the hippopotamus. They have thick pillar-like legs with three toes covered with broad hoof-like nails. Rhinoceros are legendary for their poor eyesight, but their sense of smell and hearing is, are acute. 
Although they look clum clumsy, rhinoceros can swirl around to repeatedly face danger and, if threatened, can charge at speeds of up to 30 miles per hour. So you really don't want to mess with these guys. They are killed for their horns mostly so that uh, traditional medicines can be made out of their horns. A lot of people believe their horns can give them some of that vigor that you just saw there. So that's very unfortunate and there's just not a lot left. They don't breed very quickly. Wow, they're just charging around. That is so cool. I'm glad that we have insurance on these jeeps. Very, very glad. Ringtail lemur 2 is very thirsty. Pandora is really thirsty. Why? Why are you over here? Why are you escaping? How is this happening so often? Pandora, give up on, on nursing that baby of yours. It is not paying attention to you. It is being groomed by by a whole nother, whole nother, what, what the heck's going on? You're going to be nursed by Pandora. There we go. Now your baby's moving. Where are you? Okay, so they're figuring it out. They are figuring it out. Why is it so messy in our camel exhibit? Ooh, probably because we have a lot of camels. Oh my, we have a lot of camels. We might expand this exhibit. Goodness gracious. We have got a lot of camels going on here. The family herd has grown quite a bit. I didn't notice. I didn't notice. So we might be expanding our camel exhibit soon in turn. It, it wouldn't hurt to do that. And termite mound with insects is fine. Okay, good. So our animals seem to be doing fine. Oh, come on, you guys. I'm trying very hard to close the jeep tour. Oh, all right, in turn. I'm going to have to grab our our giraffes and haul them out of the way. Come on, chuds. I'll give you some extra fruit if you come this way. And I'm going to finish getting our little jeep tour set up. And then hopefully, you know, I'm thinking that since we swapped out the warthogs from this exhibit, we might add in some more very dainty, elegant, long-legged creatures into our first safari zone. So I'm pretty excited about that. I'm pretty excited that hopefully we will never see another bee eater carcass again. Oh my gosh, I can't believe that. That's just, oh, oh okay, in turn. You distract the guests. I'm going to dispose of the evidence of the rather aggressive warthogs who had no reason to kill them, but they did anyway. And then I will meet you back here after lunch, okay? Bye bye